doing a special collaborative. The first time ever, ladies and gents, the USS Rikers Beard. And the Trekkie Girls. Ooh. Joining Ooh. forces. <laughs> what a power. Well, then this is like you know, the Federation when the Romulans joined the war. It's like, yeah, it but, you know, well, I don't I was, know which one's which. I was going to say the dynamic duo, but we're talking about <laughs> another franchise. Yeah. And we're very, we're very uh, lucky to be joined by uh, Vic Mignana. We got it right. Hi. Perfect. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> and and Chris Dewan as well. Um, Do thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> and yeah, thank, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Um, have you it's like a Star Trek like therapy session. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually a therapist. <laughs> there you go. Very perfect. <laughs> um, we we had a chance to speak on Friday. How have you found the, the weekend at Sci-Fi Ball? I, I am having so much fun here. It, this is so different than any, any other con I've been to. It's more intimate with the fans, and I, I'm getting to know you know I, I know all of you guys now. It's I mean, it's really great. You know I talked to you probably guys you know, several times, and you don't get a chance like that at some of these conventions. It's in and out, and, and uh, it's it's just a, it's a wonderful experience. It's been a fantastic weekend. I love coming to the UK. Uh, I've done a lot of shows here, and uh, I just love the people, and uh, and I cherish any chance to be here. Well, you've been very generous with your time, uh, both of you, both in formal sessions uh, and uh, obviously in the more informal sessions later in the evening. Great. So that's very much appreciated. Um, we, uh, you've seen our set uh, downstairs mm -hmm. from the Rikers Beard, The Next Generation, and uh, showed you Vic last night. We're looking to build oh, an original yeah, constitution amazing. going you forward. Guys see it? Uh -huh. um, what advice would you have for ourselves if we were looking to branch out and do some small uh, sort of vignettes, five or ten minute little skits? Maybe to help out the, the sci-fi ball and the, the Teenage Cancer Trust going forwards. Uh, how could we start to emulate the, the work that you've done with Star Trek Continues? Um, do you really want to know? <laughs> really want to know. Uh, a lot of fan productions spend a massive amount of time building sets, making costumes. They want the sets to be so perfect. And that's nice, that's a good thing. The only reason that we made our sets as authentic as we did is so you could forget them. Because in order to get the audience to give you permission to tell them a story, you, they need to accept that they are in this universe. And I'm on the Enterprise. If the sets were not accurate, they, could, they would never... You know what I mean? They, they could never get into the story yeah. because they'd constantly be looking around the set yeah. going, that's the wrong color, that doesn't belong there, that doesn't look right, that yeah. looks too yeah. narrow. Constantly Those throwing them off. And so yeah. they, would never, they wouldn't be watching the story because they couldn't get past the inaccuracy of the sets. But the sets are nothing more than a backdrop. And this is where a lot of fan films really go wrong. They focus completely on, on building sets or making costumes and almost nothing on story and acting of the story. Um, so what my encouragement to you would be to pay the most attention, attention to what happens in front of the sets. Um, I, I, I noticed uh, when we started shooting our series and we started looking at the original series, when they would take shots around the bridge, close-ups around the bridge, the background would be dark. Now, in the wide shot, it wasn't dark. You could see that console as plain as day. But when they were shooting a close-up, the DP would knock the light off the back console so that the focus is on the actor, not the bright wall behind him. They would actually stylize the lighting to tell the story because it's not about the sets. It's about the, what's happening in front of the sets. And that's a very, very important thing. Anybody can go to... Home Depot and buy lumber and paint and build a set you know but but it's it's a whole different thing to craft a story especially a Star Trek story Star Trek has its own type of storytelling and and that's something very special and then actors and performers who can execute that story that's great advice thank you um We've seen you at conventions all around the world and you are greatly admired by the Lower Decks and the Admiralty <laughs> of Star Trek alike. Um, how did, the, if we can talk about it, how did the new rules on fan film production affect 
um, affect Star Trek Continues? Well, they ended Star Trek Continues, to be fair. Basically. Yeah. Uh, we cannot tell our stories in 15 minutes. I mean, mm. you can't tell a Star Trek story in 15 minutes. Sure, you can fight Klingons in 15 minutes, or, you know what I mean, or you can beam down and look around the planet for 15 minutes, but you can't tell an involved, deep, meaningful story with subtlety and character development in 15 minutes. So as soon as we became aware of the guidelines, we knew that we were going to have to wrap our series up. We violate the fan film guidelines in almost every way. <laughs> you can't. You can't be an employee. You can't be a SAG actor. And, and we're all SAG we're actors. All SAG actors. You can't have you know professionals. We're all professionals. It can't be more than fifteen minutes. Well, it has to be more than fifteen. I mean, across the board, and we knew that. Um, but the good news is that rather than shutting us down, you know, CBS didn't call up and say, "You're done. Turn it off. Shut it down." They called and said wrap it up. We know that you're planning on wrapping it up. We know that you were planning on doing <coughs> 13, 14 episodes. I don't think maybe that's, uh, maybe you can't do, maybe 13 is too much. Can you, can you wrap it up quicker than that? But the point was they were allowing us to finish what we had started. And that's the most important thing. Um, I'd love to think that we could do something else in the future. Um, you know, like we talked about in our panel the other day, maybe maybe come back together for a feature length thing in a couple of years. Maybe by then the guidelines will have changed or relaxed a little bit. Who knows what may happen in a couple of years. But, I'll just roll my wheelchair on in there. <laughs> <laughs> Grow a mustache. Grow a mustache. But, uh, but yeah, the fan film guidelines, there, there was a lot of collateral damage to productions that were already in existence who had been playing by the rules and had been doing everything honorably. Um, but, you know, that's a risk you take. You know, we knew going in that we did known Star Trek and we were very careful to give credit to CBS, to, to honor them, to compliment them, to support their, their licensed stuff, let everybody know that we were operating under the good graces of the people that actually own Star Trek. But we always knew that it was it was a risk. Um, but I'm quite, very honored yeah. that we finished it. Yeah. To be quite yeah. frank, when we did our first episode, Pilgrim of Eternity, we all thought that was that would probably be it. We're just you know we're just happy to do one. Yeah. And the, really, the fact that we got to do eleven, I mean, sure, we would have loved to have done more, but we did eleven episodes. Yeah. And we should be very proud of that. And uh, I don't think there's anyone else that has actually. I don't think. I so. think I think we've now with eleven episodes and the three vignettes. I think we've surpassed in time and in, in number of, of accomplished productions, any other fan production, and I know I'm partial, but the superior you know, quality and, and production overall. We agree 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I know right. it sounds stupid for me to say that, but that doesn't make it any less true. You know what I mean? Like, like oh, you're tooting your own horn, you know. But, yeah, and that great yeah. actor, Scotty. God, he was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Laura's actually got a question that leads on from that quite nicely. Yes, actually, um, what we're wondering is, um, in particular to Chris, what would you consider what you created, um, would you consider it canon? in terms of, of the Star Trek universe and what, would you, what do you think that your father would think of the direction you took his character and the legacy you left behind? Well, well, personally, I do feel that it's canon and I think the production team went out of their way to make, you know, even though we, we are creating things, we are creating stories, I think they went out of their way but beyond comprehension to find ways to link things together. And, I mean, they, they just, hours and hours and hours of research and we had Larry and Emma check and James Kerwin and all these other people doing that. Um, uh, ultimately, it's up to the powers that be to consider it canon. Um, well, as the fans, we, we definitely consider it canon. Like, we, we yeah, it's it's nice. Plus, anyway. I mean, I do. I yeah. personally do. And uh, there's no, uh, for me, there's no reason not to. I, I have something I'd like to add about this. Um, not to point fingers, and I won't name names, but there is another fan production. And, uh, there are others? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, uh, and they, uh, some, someone from that fan production several weeks ago posted something on Facebook like, it's so arrogant to think that a fan production would consider themselves canon. No fan production 
is canon, nor should it ever be canon. Well, this coming from another fan production that <laughs> yeah. that wishes they had accomplished what we've accomplished. So, please, so please you know, you have to understand canon. the source. Yeah. But but here was what I wanted to respond with this, but I didn't because I try not to get into those little stone throwing <laughs> matches online. Yeah. But I wanted to write back and say, hey, we don't consider ourselves canon. Rod Roddenberry does. We don't consider ourselves canon. Thousands of fans do. We have never referred to ourselves as canon. We don't we don't make that assertion. But for Rod Roddenberry to get up on stage or in front of people multiple times and say, as far as I'm concerned, it's canon. And if my dad were alive, I think he would consider it part of the Star Trek universe. Yeah. We didn't say that. But it's okay. We're honored that other people think that. Has um, Bill Shatner put any thoughts forward in the subject? Or what would you think his response um, would be? Privately or publicly? <laughs> <laughs> Privately. Privately, I will tell you that Bill is impressed, I think. I think. <laughs> I believe in my interactions personally, privately with him, that he is impressed with what we've accomplished. Has he seen like a full episode? Most likely not. He's a busy guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he likes to tell people that he's never even seen much of the original series completed. So he's certainly not going to watch our little fan thing. But... But I do know I, he's seen photos. Uh, I've shared things with him, uh, and he was impressed. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. We were in a cab together in Germany. We were at FedCon, and he, I was in the front seat, and he and his wife were in the back seat. And we had just gone to dinner, and we were going back to the hotel, and Bill said to me, no, Bill's wife said, how's your Star Trek production going? <laughs> now, mind you, I don't talk about Star Trek to Star Trek people. It's just out of respect, you know? A million people want to talk to Bill Shatner about Star Trek. I'm not going to be one of them. Um, so I don't bring it up. But his wife said, uh, Elizabeth said, um, how's the Star Trek production going? And I said, it's going really great. You know, it's going well. People are really enjoying it. And then Bill said, have you figured out a way to make money with it? <laughs> and I turned around and said, no. But that was never the point. Um, it's it, you know it, that the money of being paid for it or profiting from it is never why we did it in the first you place. Think he was sort of leading the witness, in a sense. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't at all. Because okay. no, no, because he even I mean he even went on to say you should figure out a way to make money with it. You should figure out a way to capitalize on it. And I said we can't. Well, the fact that Elizabeth said something this means they probably have been talking. Oh well, about well, it, and so, when we yeah. were in Dubai, his wife was the one that actually uh, asked me about it. And I started showing his wife pictures from the series. I wasn't showing them to Bill. I was showing them to his wife. And it was at that point that Bill said, let me see. I was like, okay. And I showed him and he was like, well, amazing. this is amazing, it looks amazing. Um, I don't force that on people, especially not somebody that I have such enormous respect and love for. When I started hanging out with him, you would think that the 12-year-old... <laughs> You know, in me that loved him so much wants to go, oh, I, I'm getting to play you and I and did this and look what I made and we did this and... Nope. I, I, I held that, you know, held on to that and just tried to connect with him as a fellow actor. I'm signing autographs at this table and he's signing autographs at this table and we're here for the same reason kind of thing. And we built up a friendship. At one, as you said this at lunch today, he and I were backstage at Phoenix Comic Con and I was going to go out to introduce him for his Q&A. And I said, Bill, can I tell them that we're friends? And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, of course we are, aren't we? And the 12-year-old in me was like, I would have never imagined, you know? But he could have easily done this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not friends. <laughs> Don't you dare. Yeah. But, but, you know, so I, that was my desire was to become friends and and treat him with, re with, with respect and admiration, but not, you know, be crazy, you know, push Star Trek and on him. Uh, he's had that for 40 years, you know? Right. Thank you, Vic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Vic Mignone and Chris Dewan. Thank you. Thank you.